That wins. So let's go. Let's go. All right. Get up. Get up, Diane. All right. Five jumping decks. Come on, guys. Come on. Ravi, you too. <laughs> there we go. Good, good, good. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> you want to? Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Ravi missed it. <laughs> you gotta touch your hands on top. There you go. Good, good, good. All right. That seems like it woke you up a little bit. So that's good. A little more energy. So, uh, guys, the first question I wanted to ask you is good health. Is it a privilege? Do you guys know what a privilege is? Anyone? Go ahead. Something you earn. Anyone else? names except sorry you and Zion so I'll have to pick on you guys. Anyone else? Privilege? Just go for it. Doesn't matter if you don't know the definition. Just try. Yeah. All right. Yeah it's it's a privilege is something like you have to earn like she said and it's not available to everyone right? So only certain people get it but should good health really be a privilege or should everyone be able to get it? everyone right but it turns out that it's very difficult especially in poor and developing countries the kids that you guys are trying to help it's extremely difficult and we'll learn about why that is some of the reasons are obvious uh, nutrition is a factor is health and exercise is a factor but we'll go through some of this stuff so you guys can understand you know how complicated it is to actually be healthy right so if you go to the next slide and this was supposed to be an animation it's not but when you think about health, you know, most people think about like someone really fit, right? Someone fit, um, you know, usually famous celebrity, someone like that, right? And so Rithik Roshan, if you guys like him, I don't know if, what the new stars are today, but you know, back in my day, this was the guy, right? Um, Deepika. But really it doesn't have to be someone who's like muscular and slim and attractive. It's not about that stuff, right? It's more about, you know, are you free of disease? Are you able to move around? Are you able to have fun? Uh, do you have stress in your life? Everyone has stress in their life, but are you able to manage it, right? There's like happy, healthy kids, happy, healthy adults, right? You don't have to be uh, like skinny. You don't have to be, you know, a certain shape in order to be healthy, right? Um, so the World Health Organization, which is the WHO, right? This is how they define health. It's complete physical and mental and social well-being right so it's not just the physical part where you know you can do you know 20 push-ups or you can do you know 50 sit-ups or whatever it is right? I don't know how many you do uh, but it's not just those things it's also mental health and Ravi you talked a little bit about mental health and that's a big factor as well in complete you know well-being right there's a physical aspect there's a mental aspect um, and it's not just the absence of disease right so it's not like hey I don't have diabetes so you know, I'm great, right? But you might have chronic conditions. Maybe you have some back pain or this is for older adults. You guys don't understand any of this today, but later on you will. So uh, physical health, right? So tell me what you guys think. Obviously there's some clues on the screen here. And what are the major factors for physical health, good physical health? Exercise. Exercise. Um, eating, healthy food. eating healthy food. What else? Getting enough. Yeah, what is this guy doing? Yeah, he's sleeping. So you got to get enough sleep, right? Can't just be on your phones. Got to get enough sleep. That's super important. I wish I could be like that. He looks really relaxed. Um, and exercise doesn't have to be like, you know, like um, the things that you typically think about, like, um, you know, going to the gym or, uh, you know, lifting weights or running. It can be things like if you're looking at what this guy's doing, what is this guy doing? Shoveling. So maybe he's working in the garden, right? Um, what's this person doing here? Dancing, right? So it's a whole lot of things. So you don't have to think when you think about exercise that this is the only thing I can do. There's a lot of different things. It just means getting up and moving your body and being active, right? So you're burning a lot of energy, you're feeling good. Uh, and those are the things that actually help you become physically healthy. From a mental health perspective, this is the other aspect, huge, right? So you can't just be, you know, fit 
from a physical perspective, the mental aspect is really important, right? So what is uh, mental health? Um, it's not only the absence of depression, anxiety, or another disorder. Also depends on the ability to, you know, and you can see a bunch of reasons here, right? But this is the thing I like, right? This is the, this is the quote I like. Knock me down again and I'll get back up again. So it's the ability to manage, right, what happens to you, right? Because you guys go through so much stress at school, I'm sure, right? A lot of homework, you know, a lot of assignments. You guys got to show up here, you know, Sunday morning at 930, right? That's difficult. So how do you, how do you manage that? You know, that's, that's what makes up mental health. Do you get stressed out? Or can you manage it? Do you have good relationships with your friends? Do you have good relationships with your family? Those are the things that help you balance mental health. So let me ask you this. When you look at these factors um, and you think about the kids that you guys are trying to help, um, is mental health an issue? Yes. When you look at these factors? Yeah, the answer is yes, right? Because if you look at these things, achieve balance, achieve your potential do you think those guys can do that very hard right i mean they can but it's like one in a million and i think what you guys are doing to help them will make a huge difference so you got to think about this when you're thinking about like how can we help these kids be healthy you got to think about well we can give them great access to good food and uh we can make sure they understand what exercise is and those things but that comes later right if they can't even, um, you know, feel safe and secure, that's number one, right? If they can't even have that because they live in a, you know, a country that has a lot of war, that has a lot of adversity and conflict, then how can they even do the other things, right? So, so that's very important to keep in mind, okay? So some factors for good health, again, not just mental, physical, there's other stuff as well. So genes, what are genes? Anyone has it, any idea? Go ahead. DNA. DNA, yep. That's, it's uh, genes are a type of DNA. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's instructions for how your body does things basically, right? And usually they say, you know, you inherit it from your parents, right? So this person has good genes, uh, they're going to be a great athlete, right? Because their father was a great athlete or their mother was a great athlete or she's really smart because, you know, her mom was really smart, something like that. So those are traits that you inherit from your parents. So unfortunately, you can't do anything about that, right? You got what you got and you got to work on the other things. So genes are essentially, you're lucky if you have great genes, right? But you can do a lot with the other things as well, right? From a health perspective. Um, so some of the other things, access to healthcare. So when you're sick, can you get access to a doctor, right? Can you go to a hospital? Can you get the medicines you need, right? Obviously that's a factor in health. Environmental factors, where a person lives, state of the surrounding environment. So again, you know, is there a lot of pollution there? Uh, is there a lot of traffic? Um, is it safe conditions? How do you get to school? You guys go to school in your cars. There's countries where kids walk miles and miles and miles, right? To get somewhere, right? So those are the environmental conditions, the living conditions, right? Income, right? Obviously how much you earn, how much your family earns makes a difference in what access to healthcare you have. This is not a problem for any of us here. We're lucky. We're super fortunate, right? In a lot of countries, these are critical things for kids. And, and older people as well, adults, right? These make a huge difference. So income, education, education obviously because it helps you, you know, get out of poverty if you have education or even if you are living in a good state, the more education you have, the more understanding you have about what are the things that affect your health and what you need to do, right? Relationships with friends and family, super important. Uh, so we'll be doing exercises in here. Looks like, I mean, you guys know each other, but seems like you guys don't talk to each other very much so we'll do some exercises to get you guys to do that <laughs> Robbie's really happy about that all right so good nutrition and exercise and today we'll mostly be focused on focusing on nutrition uh but maybe we'll end with a few sit-ups and stuff like that right okay so determinants of health so these are things that uh, are big categories of factors that essentially affect health right so 
just waiting for a few people to come in. Yeah, okay, all right. So we'll keep going. So socioeconomic factors. So these are things like education, job status, family, social support, income, community safety. Um, and these actually affect your health up to 40%, right? And why do you think that is? Any ideas? Any ideas why socioeconomic factors affect health? Yep. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so if there's a situation at home, right, it's gonna affect your mental health, your stress level. And if you're not feeling good, you're not gonna to want to go eat good food or you know, exercise or any of the things, right? So it's a big, big factor. Um, physical environment, obviously where you live, again, the stuff we talked about. And then here's the interesting thing. If you guys look here, 50% can be traced back to your zip code, right? So it's all about where you live. So again, it's like, if you think about um, where we are, right? In the US, you know, Frisco, Texas, Flower Mound, Texas, Plano, wherever you guys are from, right? Uh, we're really lucky that we live in great places, safe neighborhoods. We don't have to worry about, you know, getting robbed or getting mugged or things like that, right? Um, we don't have to worry about violence on the streets. And that prevents you from getting stressed out about those types of things, right? You, you don't feel like you're unsafe or insecure, right? Hopefully not, yeah? So those are things that affect 40% of your health because it drives, again, how it's going to affect your mental health and your physical health. And then health behaviors, which is the stuff we talked about, right? In terms of nutrition, there's diet and exercise, you know, alcohol use. Hopefully you guys don't know what that is right now. Uh, tobacco use, stuff like that, right? But uh, I know you know what it is. <laughs> so uh, these are the things that affect 30% of your health, 30%. Right. So it's a very important factor. But again, the biggest factor is physical environment, where you live, those things that drive most of your health conditions, if you will. Right. And the lowest one on the on the bottom here is access to healthcare. So when we think about kids in developing countries, um, don't necessarily focus on medicine and doctors first, because that comes later. Right. It's all this other stuff that has a lot more pronounced effect, a lot more profound effect on you know, kids' health and adults' health and so on. Does that make sense? Yeah? All right, so what is good nutrition? What are nutrients? Back to you on your screen. Or give me, give me um, maybe a breakdown. Like, uh, what are some things that, that make up nutrition? Any ideas? Sorry, you? Oh. <laughs> I guess like this is what happens when you eat a donut for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Anyone else? Go ahead. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Did you want to add anything? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's like the the calories, right? It's those kinds of things. Also, speak louder, guys. Yeah. And Zion's it's just looking at me. He's like, what is this guy talking about? He's not going to answer me. Zion, what do you think? You should know this because I talk about this all the time. Anything else that makes up nutrition? An example of something? No? All right, that's fine. So, nutrition is, nutrients are basically the ingredients in food, right? They are the things we take in that keep our body functioning properly, right? Keep us free from disease, help us, you know, move and be strong and, you know, allow our brains to work the right way, right? So we can think clearly. So those are the things that make up good nutrition, right? And so a balanced diet with good nutrition means no added sugars. Um, so what does that mean? No added sugars. What do you think that is? Yeah, that's right. And the donut itself also already has like a ton of extra sugar. That's not natural sugar, right? It's like someone actually put sugar in there to make the donut, right? 
So how many of you uh, love donuts? Okay, that's good. It's all right. I mean, those are desserts, right? That's the type of thing that's like kind of a luxury, right? A privilege that you should only eat in moderation, you know? Um, not for breakfast every day, for example, right? Uh, so you, is that what you do? Oh, no, no <laughs> You're smiling, so uh, just checking, just checking. All right, so a balanced diet means no added sugars, low saturated fat, which is a type of fat that's really bad for heart and cholesterol. You, probably, you guys probably know some of these terms, right? And so if that happens, then of course you get heart disease and heart attacks, so you want to stay away from that. Uh, lots of veggies and fruits. Um, what's, uh, what's your favorite vegetable? Cucumbers? Okay. That's good. That's an interesting one. Anyone else? Favorite veggie? Carrots. Carrots is very good. Very good. Uh, good for the eyes. Uh, good for skin. So it has a lot of minerals and the right vitamins, vitamins. Um, anyone else? Favorite veggie? Yeah. Bell peppers. Very good. Very good. And there's different types of bell peppers too, right? There's red, yellow, green. So the more colorful the vegetable, usually it means, you know, that's uh, high in nutrients and high in the, the good things that we want, right? So those are things you can start to distinguish about good uh, vegetables and fruits and so on. Um, and then there's also fruits. So lots of fruits. So if you guys like fruits, that's a great thing, right? Lots of whole grains. You guys know the difference between a whole grain and a processed grain? Any idea? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And what are some examples? Whole grain. Yeah, you got it. That's really good. That's really good. That's exactly what it is. So what happens is, um, so if you have white bread, for example, white bread is processed, right? So what they've done is they've actually stripped out part of the grain and the remainder is what you get. And that's the white part, right? So usually whole grain stuff is more reddish in color, darker, brown, things like that. Um, so that's the difference. And like you said, oatmeal, right? Brown rice, those are, those are things that you should be having. It's got a lot of fiber, good for digestion, right? Helps you break down the nutrients so you actually get the value of that in your body, right? Whereas if you're having enriched foods and processed foods, usually anything out of a, um, like a bag, right? Potato chips, not really good for you, right? Uh, but again, it's okay. I mean, these are okay to do and have in moderation, but they shouldn't make up most of your diet. Now, the stuff that we're talking about here doesn't really affect the kids that you guys are trying to help because they have a different set of problems. You know, their issue is not having too much chips or donuts or any of these things. It's a whole different set of things, right? And protein. What's protein? Any ideas about protein? Any examples of what types of things have protein? Yeah. Chicken. Chicken. Fish. Yep. Anything else? Eggs. 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 Yep. Legumes, right? Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Tofu. Yep. Soy. Yep. There's a whole lot of things. Everything has protein to some extent, really, right? Even if you have bread, bread has protein, right? If you have rice, rice has protein. Um, so, you know, the important thing about this is a balanced diet has some very specific recommendations about how much fat you should have. And by the way, let me ask this question. Is fat good for you? Yeah, yeah, we need it. Actually, if you have a diet with super low fat, it's actually very bad because it affects, you know, the, how the body processes other vitamins and minerals. Okay, so fat is actually important, but again, in the right amount. So everything is about, you know, what's the right amount. Okay. So if we go to the primary elements of nutrients and you answered this question, what was your name? Arush? Yeah, so Arush answered this question. So carbs, you guys hear this all the time, have low carbs, low carbs. I mean, not necessarily. I mean, that's a, that's a grown up thing. It's a westernized problem, right? Have low carbs so that you get fit and you have muscle, stuff like that. 
Um, but carbs are really important. Uh, they're the body's actually the main source of energy, right? Uh, fat is also important. Like you can see, it insulates the body. It helps you maintain your body temperature. So if you're super skinny and don't have a lot of fat, um, you know, that can also cause problems and health issues, right? Uh, protein helps maintain water and pH balance, keeps your immune system strong, gives you the energy, right? It's actually the building blocks of everything that happens in your body. Uh, so it's one of the most important things that you have to get the right amount of. Uh, vitamins, there's 13 different types, right? So there's the A, C, D, E, K, and there's a bunch of B vitamins, right? And it's important to get all of these in the right amounts. Um, the good news is if you have lots of fruits and veggies and whole grains and you know, fish, chicken, um, eggs, things like that, right? Then you're getting the right amounts. You just have to know how much on your plate to, you know, to take, right? So if you take all whole grains and no protein stuff, then that's not good either, right? So there's recommendations for what the right amounts are. And so I think everyone here is between six to 17, right? Is that right? Yeah. So this is for you guys, right? So if you go home and you want to, eat healthy and you want to know what the right amounts are to eat. If you're interested in that, we can take a look at this and see, well, we need, I need to have like two cups of fruit a day. Are you guys having two cups of fruit a day? Yeah. Are you? No. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Most people don't, but I mean, these are things that if you know, if you have the knowledge, then you can make a decision. I want to do this right to be healthier and, um, you know, be more fit or feel better, right? These are all things that affect, you know, how we go about the world every day, right? So, so veggies, again, focus on fruits, vary your veggies. Um, when you're having grains, make sure at least half of them are whole grains. Um, and water, uh, where's water? Interesting, this one doesn't say anything about water. But how much water do you guys think is um, is the right amount to have every day? Eight yeah, at least eight. At least eight. That's really important. Again, keeps everything clean and transports um, minerals and vitamins throughout your body, and it's just a vital ingredient. If you don't have it, you get dehydrated. Right. Uh, that's that's what it means. You don't have enough water in your system. Okay. So now that was kind of the the stuff that affects us more, I think, in, in you know, developing countries and Western countries and rich countries, right? But the first problem, you know, that, that you guys will encounter, right, with the kids that you're trying to work with is what if there's not enough food, right? That's the first problem. Is, you know, good nutrition is later, right? You know, once you have access to food, then you can think about, okay, like, what stuff am I having? Right? Am I having enough protein? Am I having enough, uh, you know, veggies? And uh, but you know, the biggest problem is hunger. That's number one, right? <coughs> so here's something that's really should we make or? Hey, Ratu, can you go on mute? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's a kind of a sobering fact, right? Uh, and this was from like two, three years ago, this, uh, this fact here, this statistic, but there is enough food, there's more than enough food produced in the world today to feed everyone in the world, right? How many, how many people do we have in the world? No, any ideas? How many people, Zion? Yeah, I think it's, it's about eight now, yeah. So that's a lot of people, but we have enough food on planet Earth to feed everyone, right? But here's the thing, 815 million people across the world go to bed hungry every night, right? They don't, they don't get enough food, right? Because there's so much wastage, right? We, we eat, but there's all these things that we kind of have leftovers and do we actually give it away or do we finish it off? In Western countries, we usually throw it away, right? And that's a problem because, you know, 
when we do that, we're not thinking about all the people that go hungry, you know, every single day. <laughs> Here's the other interesting thing, right? If you think about who's producing all the food in the world, the small farmers, herders, fishermen, they produce 70% of the world's global food supply, 70%. So that's a huge amount, right? But they're the ones that actually undergo most of the issues, um, face most of the conditions about po poverty and not having enough access to food. And so that's uh, really ironic, right? They're producing most of the food for the world, but they themselves don't have enough to eat, um, which is really sad. So that's something that you guys should keep in mind as you're thinking about like how to solve some of these problems, because that will be the challenge to you guys. How can we solve some of these problems? Okay. And uh, conflict is a major driver of hunger, right? So if you're in a war zone, obviously you're going to have more issues getting access to good food or even enough food, right? And uh, if you look at the stats about the number of uh, children, right? Out of 815 million, 489 million are children, right? Like kids like you guys, they don't, they don't have access to food, enough food. So nutrition is, again, a foreign concept. It's just like getting enough calories so that you don't starve to death. So it's pretty serious stuff, right? So here's, uh, here's an interesting slide. So if you look at this, Anything jump out at you? Like something interesting about this slide? Yeah. So for excess protein is rabbit starvation? Yeah. You don't hear about that very much. Um, but that's like a condition that happens um, if you have almost no fat in your diet, right? So. Um, it, it, it prevents you, again, we saw in a previous slide, right? If you don't have fat, then it can't process the vitamins and minerals in your body. And so if you don't have that, you don't have proper brain functioning, your organs don't work correctly. So an excess of everything is actually bad, right? So there's, again, the message is moderation. Anything else? Anything else jump out at you guys about this slide? That's kind of weird. Yeah, is that? Yeah, trans fat, no deficiency. So that's a good thing. So um, you can avoid trans fat and not have any, and that's actually a good thing. Uh, it's too much obesity, though. That stands out for me. Yeah. Here's the, here's the thing I wanted to point out. Most of the problems, forget the rabbit starvation, that's kind of a, an extreme situation, right? But everything that you see here, these are all like the problems that we hear about, right? In the US or any other rich country like Britain or France or Germany or any one of these guys, right? You hear about, hey, people are too fat, right? Or people are too, you know, too much high blood pressure or they have health, you know, cardiac problems. They're going to the doctor for a heart attack, right? They're going to the hospital. Um, they have um, diabetes, which comes from having too much sugar, right? So these are all Western country problems, mostly, right? Because the problem we have is having too much food. So we, we overindulge, right? And that's what happens. So if you look at the deficiencies, these are the problems that you guys will be trying to solve, um, being change makers, right? So when you think about the kids um, in poorer countries and developing countries, that's what's going on. And that's probably why you might not even have heard of some of these diseases, right? So what about uh, this one? Look at the protein one, protein deficiency. Quashi or core, you know what that is? Uh, have you guys seen pictures of kids where they're really skinny, but they have an extremely distended, like bloated belly? Have you seen pictures like that ever? You have? Okay, we'll, we can show you some pictures of that, right? But it's like the kids are really skinny or even adults. It can happen in adults too, but mostly it affects kids, right? And so it happens when they don't get enough protein in their diet. So why aren't they having enough protein? Because they're not getting meat, 
right? They're not getting X. You know, they're not getting, you know, anything to do with, you know, soy products, right? They're just not getting enough food. So what happens is, you know, their body is being affected. And it's interesting because the, their bellies blowed up, but the rest of their body is really skinny, right? And that's, that's what happens when you have protein deficiency. So you're not getting enough, okay? Saturated fat, if you don't have enough, then vitamin deficiencies, low testosterone, you don't have enough energy, right? Unsaturated fat, uh, again, vitamin, vitamin deficiencies. And if you don't have uh, enough minerals, then night blindness, very, very, all these other things that you guys might probably have never heard of, right? Because these are not problems we have. But these are the problems that happen in the developing countries. Okay. These are problems every one of your friends are actually going through. And that's the reason this becomes even more important for each of you. Right? It's not because that you have them, your friends have them, right? I mean, I have them. You gotta do something about it. Exactly. Exactly. So here's what happens. So this is a hard picture to look at, but I mean, that's reality, right? Uh, so if you see some of these kids, right? They don't have enough food. Nutrition, not the biggest issue right now. They're just not getting enough calories. Actually, if I go back to the previous slide, if you look at that first element, calories, so if you're not getting enough, then you can starve, right? Or your body gets affected, so you get stunted, meaning that you don't grow properly. And if you don't grow properly, what happens is, here are the short-term effects. Your brain doesn't develop properly. Your immune system is weaker. What happens if your immune system is weaker? Yeah, yeah. You get affected, like, you're just more prone to diseases, anything, like common colds, uh, fever, you know, diarrhea, you know, a bunch of stuff can happen to you if your immune system is not strong because it's not fighting against the, um, the diseases that can affect the human body, right? Just you become very um, vulnerable to that sort of stuff. Lower IQ, what's IQ? You don't have any IQ points? Yeah. You know what IQ is? Are you kidding me? I'll show you. IQ in Yeah, but what is it? IQ stands for? Intelligence. Quotient. 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 Yeah. yeah, it's just a measure of how intelligent you are, right? So, um, so obviously, if, if you have lower IQ, then long term, when you become an adult, right, uh, you can work because you don't have enough strength. You can think clearly. Um, you have problems getting educated or holding a job because you don't understand what you have to do. Because again, your IQ is less than what it should be, right? Some of the things that we do here are really complicated things. Like you guys would probably become, you know, grow up to be doctors and engineers and businessmen. And can you do that if you have lower IQ? You know, it's hard, right? It becomes much harder. And so also um, stunting happens, which means that they're not growing as much. So you'll see that a lot of these kids, when they grow up, you know, even when they become adults, they're like really short, they're weak, right? It affects their physique, their conditions, and again, like how many diseases they can pick up. And ultimately what happens, they can have a premature death, right? So they die really early, right? So these are all the problems that can happen if you are um, not getting enough food. And then after you get enough food, then you got to think about good nutrition. So hopefully you guys learned something about what are the things uh, that make up good nutrition and some of the things about health, right? Physical health and mental health and so on. And so that's, um, that's what we're gonna end with, right? Uh, the challenge to you guys, and we'll do this a little differently because I wanna make sure that you guys are working together and get to know each other because you've been here a while and what, how many months, six months? They've been here for six months. Six, six months, months right? Yeah, okay. All right, so we'll make sure that uh, you guys get to know each other a little bit better. And Ravi Uncle will make the assignments. I'll leave it to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he's gonna, he's gonna do the assignment, uh, make groups, 
So the challenge is get into groups of five or four, right? And I want you to think about these two questions. The first one, how can we help eradicate hunger for kids in poor and developing countries? Okay, so you just brainstorm. Now this is super difficult question, super difficult because if we knew the answer, we would have figured it out. So it's not an easy thing that I'm asking you guys to think about. But the point is that someone has to think about it, right? And that's why you guys are here because you're change makers. So the challenge for you guys is to think about ideas and then we'll have a conversation, a discussion about what can actually be done. So try to think about, first of all, just brainstorm like crazy, right? Uh, wild ideas, everything goes. But then we have to think about practically what can be done, right? Because we want to come back and think, well, how can we actually do something that's going to make a difference in terms of helping reduce hunger? Eradicate is a, a much stronger word where you get rid of it totally. But even if we can help reduce it, then that's a, that's a big thing. And then once you do that, once you've solved the hunger problem, not solved or at least helped the hunger problem, the next thing is making sure that there's enough good nutrition. Because as we learned, if we don't have the right nutrition, then again, there's lots of problems that can happen, right? So those, that's the second question. So Ravi Ankal is gonna make the assignments, groups of four or five. And then when we come back, well, we're going through NTFP, right? Yeah. So we're not, are we meeting that week? We're meeting on 23rd and NTFP. NTFP. And we're meeting again on 24th. 24th. Right the day after. Okay. So for the 24th, these are the two questions that you guys should brainstorm about, okay? In your groups. Okay, make sense? Yeah? All right, so what are we doing? Jumping jacks, sit-ups, or push-ups? Sit-ups, she really wants to do sit-ups. <laughs> what, squats, everyone know what squats is? Yeah, let's do squats, come on. Let's do squats, come on, come on. Come on, end, end with high energy. Come on. Okay, let's do 10. You know what squats are? Yeah, like this. Yeah, we go down. Go up. Like this. Yeah. Oh. And you can hold your ears if you want. Oh. <laughs> yeah, do that. All right, how many? How many is that? There you go. It feels good, right? No? It will if, when, you, when you do like 50. All right, that's good. That's good. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. All right. Should I end the meeting? No? Okay, all right. So guys in uh, California, hopefully that made sense to you as well. So you'll be part of a group somewhere here, right? Okay. You still there? Rathi and Mahadev? I think they're on mute. They might be on mute. Oh, yeah. That okay, thanks, sense. guys. Yeah, I'm still. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.